Hey guys, this is Eric Weingartner with Weingartner Racing. Today's video is about carburetors actually. It's about which one makes more power, the smaller or the bigger ones. Now I know you're thinking right now, well obviously the bigger ones. Because I have done several different dyno tests and I'm gonna show you dyno results too, so don't worry about that. They're actually, this is not just me speaking out of, out of pocket. This is actually real dyno results to show you this. But anyway, as I've done dyno tests throughout my channel that if you haven't seen, go back and watch. One of the comments that, and I shouldn't say one, many times people have commented, your carburetor is way too big for that engine that you're dynoing on. And you would make more power if you put a smaller carburetor on it. Now this isn't just one comment, this is probably at least 20. Uh, I've heard so many times, you should do an 850 carburetor. For the record, the dyno mill usually has a thousand CFM, like similar to this, 4150 style carburetor on it. And I don't know how many times I've heard, put the smaller carburetor, you're going to make more horsepower. And if I don't hear that, it's definitely, you're definitely going to make more torque if you just put a smaller carburetor on there. And it made me think, um, I probably should do some testing on that. And just by accident, I end up doing that. Because besides just testing to see whether that's true or not, I wanted to see if there's a situation where it's not, where it's reversed. And what I mean by that is, obviously, from the testing I've done, the larger carburetor almost always makes more power, which I will show you that. But is there a situation where the smaller carburetor actually makes more power? Uh, can I make a situation where that would happen? And I think I've got it. So what I, in this test that you just saw some dyno pulls, but, and I'll go through them with you, but what I'm gonna show you is, I did a, a dyno pull test with my big 1000 CFM race even carburetor. It's very similar to this one, which I'll show you in just a second. And that's the one I use for everything. So it's a thousand CFM. It's redone by Mark Whitener. It's a thousand CFM race demon carburetor. And then the other two carburetors that were used was another one was a Holley 750. It's a 3310. It's a vacuum secondary Holley 750. Probably the most common carburetor you can get. It's probably the first performance carburetor I actually ever had. Um, so that's a real common one. Then the third carburetor was a 650, so an even smaller one, and it's a Holley uh, double pumper. So it's a 650 double pumper. It's got the choke tower. Both the 3310 and that 650 have the choke tower. They're like they're not even billet base plates, no billet metering box. They're like what I would consider used to be the standard 650 carburetor. And of course now they've got the XP with the you know the billet metering plates and the billet metering blocks, and they're made in aluminum and they're just better stuff. They don't have a choke tower. These are just the most basic ones. So anyway, before I do that, let's just talk about what engine was used for the combination because you want to know that. 4.6 small block Chevy. This is the small block Chevy dyno mule that I've used on many dyno tests. At the, at, during this dyno session, it had this exact intake on it, which this is the AFR 4811 single plane intake manifold, and it's unported. It had a set of AFR 227 competition port heads, also completely stock from what that came from AFR. The engine had about 11.3 compression ratio, ran it on 91 octane pump gas um, with a splash of 110. What I mean by that is it might have one gallon of 110 versus 15 gallons of pump 91 octane. The timing was set at 36 through the whole way it's locked out. So there's never really had a problem. So if you ever hear someone saying that you can't run 11.2 compression ratio on pump gas, I don't know how, we had 277 dyno pulls on this engine. N never had an issue with that. So that's not true. Um, let's see, the cam was a 260 duration on intake, 270 degrees of duration on exhaust, 685 lift, 108 lobe separation, it's a solid roller, and it was made by Urson. Um, it's pretty much it besides the scat rotating assembly. It's pretty much just good basic stuff. And the engine, for the most part, it makes about 633 horsepower in this combination. When it was ran with a Dominator, which I've got, kind of got one back here, that one really cracked up the power. Then it got the 655. I've, by the way, if you haven't seen that video, go back and watch it. The Dominator, even though it was 1,050 CFM versus the 1,000 CFM, so it's only 50 CFM more, it would make 20 horsepower on record. But that's not what this video is about. This one's about... 4150 styles, 1,000 versus 750 versus 650. And, well, let's look at the very first pool here. So 
this is very similar to the carburetor that was used on the dyno. Unfortunately, I don't have it here for filming because I keep it with the engine at the dyno, but this looks remarkably similar. So the 1000 CFM Demon that's, that I use for the, the dyno pools, it's redone by Mark Widener. It looks very close to this. There's my Lightning Racing carburetors. It has annular boosters like these. I don't know how well that can zoom in on it, but anyway, it's got annular boosters. Looks like this. This is actually a 750 blow through one, but essentially it looks like this. And that's what we used for the majority of the testing and um, I've ever used. If I didn't do that, it'd be the down air, but this is pretty much it. And nice stuff. You had a billet base plate, billet metering blocks. I mean, it works well. So what can I say? It works well. And it makes really good power. Now, what the 750 is, it's going to be, this is the 750 dyno pool. So this is the vacuum secondary one. Okay, so here's the Holley carburetor, the 750. Um, as you can tell, this one has the vacuum secondary and actually has an electric choke too. But we used the vice grips to hold that choke open, so we didn't have a problem with that. And here's the dyno pool. Okay, here's the 650, it looks pretty generic, and um, it's got a choke tower, as you can see, it just doesn't have a choke in it. It's about the most basic one you can see, probably what most of you have seen before in your lifetime. You're about to see the dyno pool, it looks like it's choo-chooing pretty good, and it's because I happened to record the last pool. So, we'd made, I don't know, probably around six or eight pulls with this carburetor, trying to get the jetting right. And on the last pull, the head gasket just decided it had enough of the day. And that's what you see for that choo-choo smoke. And I should say, we do several pulls back to back, not really back to back, but um, we get the water temperatures the same and it was repeating. So I think just by chance, the gasket giving up right at the end, it didn't affect any of the power numbers what I'm trying to get at. Um, but uh, that's why it looks like it's choo-choo and pretty good. Um, you can watch more about that in the other video when I said rest in peace for the dyno mule because it was at the end of doing the 650 that um, the head gasket problem started. Okay, now let's get to the results. These results are in this book. You can go to my online store, which I'll put a link in the description, and you can purchase this book and it has all the dyno tests that were done in that last session. So besides just the carburetors, obviously, we tested dimpled carb spacers, which you can uh, go back and look at the video on that. And also we tested some different manifolds besides just this one, we tested a bunch, including the Hulk 23, the 4150 version. Anyway, all those dyno results are in this book and it's on my online store. When you buy these books, it helps um, with dyno testing because I, I can't keep coming having this coming out of the pocket. So every time you buy a book on this, it helps pay for the dyno session. So I could test more stuff, which I then get to share with you. Um, these are, these are 50 bucks and it's got a $10 shipping cause it goes two days. I ship Mondays and Fridays. And then, but if you're like, man, I got 50 bucks, but I really like your channel. You can get the digital version of this. And I think I have it on there for like 20 bucks and that all it will, it just come to email and it's got the exact same information. You just gotta look at it through electronic device. But some people prefer to have something in front of them. Regardless, please try to support the channel if you can. Let's get the results though. So this is the first one. So, and this is just an overlay. I didn't print out the raw numbers, but this is it. So this black line you see here, this is the 1000 CFM. And this red line that you see here is the 750. So for those people who are like, wow, man, the smaller carburetor, you're gonna make more torque. Are you? It lost a lot. I didn't write this down, but this was 570 horsepower. The 1,000 CFM was 630. Now, the next question you're probably asking yourself, well, did you jet it, though? We actually did. So this was the best power pull from that because the way the carburetor worked was like this. Gary Dunsworth, which is where I, done, machine, uh, which is where I dyno at, Dunsworth Machine in Enid, Oklahoma, from time to time, people will come and he'll, they'll ask, you want to buy this carburetor? And be like, he, sometimes he says yes. But then he wants to test them before he resells them. So I, he asked if I could, we'd do it on this engine. I said, I don't care. Don't bother me a bit. So when we first put it on there, we're just trying to see if the jetting's close. Will it idle? And the jetting was close, but we did make a jet change. And it got 
right on the air fuel ratio that the demon was running so this is pretty much the best it was going to get and this is the best numbers from that 750 so and this remember it's electric choke and if you look at the picture what we did is we um used some vice grips to hold the choke open and this is what you get it's about 570 horsepower compared to 630 so yeah that's like changing just the carburetor so if you had a 750 and you just change that it's like putting on a whole new set of heads phenomenal right great way to go but that's not the whole picture there's more to it so let's throw the 650 in here now so now we have all of them so we're going to do the overlay let me just turn the page and this is where things get well interesting now we got three the red line is now the six six i don't know why i put 600 it's actually a 650 um double pumper the black line is still the vacuum secondary 750 and we have our blue line is the thousand cfm and as you could tell again the blue line is above all the rest so the thousand cfm absolutely again that's the winner every time i've gone up in cfm it makes more horsepower and torque and i know right away people are getting ready to comment well how it's not as drivable on the street that's a fallacy and i'm going to prove that one that thousand cfm that looks just like this when I was driving around the S10 and around town and I had the 355 in it. So I had a 355 small block Chevy. So it's much smaller even than the engine that's used right here. I had that 1000 CFM on. I drove it everywhere. Responsiveness on point. It's, it was phenomenal to drive. It never had one issue. And it's a 1000 CFM and everybody on the internet that parrots that too large of carburetor statement was false because on a 355 and a thousand cfm which most people think is too big drove like a champ and performed like a champ so this engine being much bigger drivability yeah i can say 100 percent certain that thousand cfm is fine but i did want to see this when the 750 went on as you can tell it's so much worse but here's where things get interesting if you look at the red line i don't know why i put that i just had a brain fart when i wrote that but it's a 650 if you look at that, this red line is the 650. That's the 750. This might be some of the problem that we see uh, when people say, well, I went faster and we made more power with a smaller carburetor because that also happened. Because the black line 750, the red line 650. That's 100 CFM less and look how much more power it's making over until right at the top, which is about 68 or so, the 7,000 when they start matching. It's only at that point they get there. And also, I'm going to point out again, because I know some people are going to comment on it. This was the best pull from the 650, because I have to tell you, when it first started, it was about the same as the 750, because its jetting was way off. So as far, and I can't say it came that way from Holly. Someone had been into it, obviously, and had way too large a jet. So the air-fuel ratio when we were first pulling was like 10.9 to 11.0, right on the verge of just having misfires from being so rich. We finally got it to the same air fuel ratios as the others, which took a lot of jet changes, but we got there and it flawless at that point. But if you look, it's still better than the 750. So then it makes you think, well, why? So right away in the comments, people are already putting this. The reason has to do with this. When you look at 650 versus 750 on this, that's vacuum secondary carb, that's a double pumper. And for those that don't know what a double pumper is, you've got one pump here, you've got your other pump here. Vacuum secondary carb simply has a little vacuum canister here. It has no pump here. So on a double pumper carburetor, when we pull the throttle wide open, the blades, which you can't see because of the darkness, open 100%. On a vacuum secondary carb, when you go 100% wide open, it's only opening this front barrel is 100%. The back barrels has a little vacuum canister over here, which you can see in the pic before, and it will start opening the secondaries. Now, if you notice... We did not change the secondary springs on that. If it takes a certain amount of vacuum to open that. So the way the vacuum canister works is it gets engine vacuum, it pulls, and then it pulls open the secondary blades. The thing is, those secondary blades probably were not open all the way. No, I didn't take a video of it because I thought we we're just messing with the carburetor. I really didn't think there was even going to make a video like this to discuss it. So, one, I didn't record to see if the actual because I should have set up the GoPro and see if the secondary is opened all the way, but I didn't. So the reason why the 750 didn't make as much as the 650 
it's more likely that the 750 really wasn't 750 because the back barrels weren't opening all the way. You might say, how is that possible? They should have, right? Well, here's a little fun fact for you. When you run smaller carburetors and you're at wide open throttle, the amount of vacuum that you have is probably like two inches of vacuum because it's such a small um, carburetor. So wide open throttle on a really small carburetor, you're probably pulling two inches. And guess what? That hurts power. When you go to a bigger carburetor, say a thousandth of an, you might get only half inch of vacuum because it's bigger. Well, that doesn't make a difference on a double pumper, but on a vacuum secondary, it takes a certain amount of vacuum to open that. So what you can do is you change those springs to a lighter spring to allow it to open up all the way. So if you're ever wondering why people might have said that, the chances are they might have put a 750 on versus a 650. And the 650 vacuum secondary, because it actually pulls more vacuum because it's more of a restriction, it can open the secondaries more than the 750 could, and that's how it could have made more power. Or it could have been a situation like this, where the 650, guaranteed 650 CFM. The 750, don't know, because the vacuum secondaries probably aren't opening all the way. But I thought you might find this interesting. I know a little bit long-winded on this, but I wanted to give you some good information about this. And please stop saying that bigger carburetors don't make as much power. Yeah, that's just not true. And I could tell you the drivability that's not true either. But what I can tell you, there are gonna be situations where maybe a smaller carburetor does make more like this. So I think that's part of where it came from. But when things are right, you get this. So anyway, guys, thanks for watching. I appreciate it. Um, please support the channel. Try to buy some stuff from my merch and my online store, especially these books, it really does help. And if you have any other questions, put them down in the comments. I'll be more than happy to hear some of them, and eventually I'll be doing more testing on it too. I don't know that we'll test those two carburetors again, because like I said, both those carburetors were done just because Dunsworth had some there to resell, and we're just testing to make sure everything was okay. So those will probably be long gone before we get another chance to do another test. But uh, maybe we'll redo this test in a different way and try and see if we can't record the secondaries and see what happens, and just for fun stuff. Anyway, more information. But guys, remember, I am no Superman. I make plenty of mistakes. I do not pat port cast iron heads. You guys take care.